so as pretty just explained and you just saw this is permission to just make a documentary here this I can do still and video footage but not any aerial footage I just want to ask him how he feels sometimes just if he he has a Mavic Pro and uh, a good old Mavic Pro and we love that drone and uh, that is I just want to ask him if he ever feels like giving up and not doing any droning here in Nepal so do you ever get tired of what do you think of this I, paper yeah I, I feel tired but I had to do it because I want to promote some of the reason here and that's why like I'm doing it for a year and a half I hope like the process will be smooth in the future mm -hmm. yeah. and do you think um, one of the reasons I've been told that they have stopped it and um, this comes from a few people is that when the earthquake happened many media and drone hobbyists came here yeah. and they droned the destruction um, and they also droned over holy sites and UNESCO sites without permission and it really upset the government and there were sort of all these quadcopters just flying around Kathmandu is there some truth to that yeah so so far I know like before the earthquake it was not that tight and I don't even think that you need a permission to fly drone in the countryside. Yeah, so before the quake it was pretty Easy. Uh, relaxed yeah. on the regulations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what I think is like uh, all this uh, international media company they came here, they make the video like we went which went viral on the YouTube like millions of views and then Nepal media they start saying that uh, this this is a foreign company, they came here and they are filming our heritage sites. Yes. And they are filming that, they are filming this, we should ban this, and they, are st they start raising the voice against the droning. And then government just listened to them and just ban it, boom, after, right after the earthquake. Okay.